you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow, our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for years. And, uh, you know, listen, outside of the Oklahoma result, I don't know that there was a bunch of major, major, major things that happened that are worth the eight, nine, 10 minute Torres breakdown. So we'll wrap the show with some of the other stuff. Clemson losing again, uh, Oregon's dominant win over Utah, all of that. But at the same time, what I do want to talk about next is the game that took place at the Rose Bowl right down the street from where I live. UCLA takes on Colorado. UCLA beats Colorado 28 to 16. And after the game, I got the same question from a lot of you that I get every single time Colorado plays. And obviously, unfortunately, they haven't been playing very well as of late. And that was, Torres, are you finally done talking about Colorado? They lost again. They're four and four. The schedule on the back half is very tough. They're so overrated. Oh my goodness. Stop talking about them. You talk about them too much to which I would say, I don't think I talk about them too much, but I guess my big takeaway from Saturday would be this. If you think that somehow Saturday was an indictment that this team isn't good or this team is overrated. I really don't know what to tell you other than I don't think you're really either pay paying close attention or you're not watching the same thing that I'm watching. Because I do think Saturday was a major step in the right direction. But more importantly, I think that Coach Prime Deion Sanders said something very interesting after the game, which portends to the present and future of the program that is at least worth discussing. Now, again, bottom line, I don't believe that Saturday was a step back. Would you have loved to beat a top 25 team on the road, in their backyard, in their stadium? Of course you would. Everybody would love to do that. But at the same time, winning in college football isn't easy. Winning on the road isn't easy. And you could see some positive things coming out of this game. One, offense out of the bye, especially early. It looked better. It wasn't good enough, certainly, especially late, and we will get to that. But out of the bye, first drive, I would argue, is the best drive they've had since week two, week three against Nebraska and Colorado. Move the ball in sync, in rhythm. Unfortunately, you got to settle for a field goal. Then the second drive, you got to settle for a field goal. And then, oh, by the way, coming out of the half, you have a couple big plays, get yourself in field goal or get yourself into the red zone and again have to settle for a field goal. So it's frustrating, but there were positives that came out from the offense. On the defensive perspective, I don't think there's any doubt there was some positives. Overall, you hold a very good UCLA team to 28 points in that game. You force four turnovers. Travis Hunter is looking like Travis Hunter again. Two interceptions, really good. Thought it was interesting after the game, Coach Prime basically said, look, he came back from injury for Stanford. We focused on getting him right at wide receiver, and he probably didn't spend enough time uh, focusing on cornerback. Stayed back during the bye, watched film, watched film intently, and I thought he had his best game. I don't worry about him as a kid. He always, uh, you know, when the lights are on, he's always ready to go. He's always ready to deliver. But at the same time, I thought the defense looked much better. The offense early on coming out of the half as well looked good. And most importantly, I think this was the part that even, uh, you know, the biggest Colorado supporter was frustrated with. The penalties were much better. I mean, they actually had fewer penalties on Saturday than UCLA did on the road, which I think is worth noting. One of the penalties, by the way, was absolutely nonsense. That should, uh, that, that, excuse me, that Shiloh Sanders uh, targeting penalty, that was not targeting. Joel Klatt said it was not targeting. I think during the game, they said it was not targeting. Um, and so I bring it up because you look at things and things are clearly getting better. Things are clearly getting cleaned up. Things are clearly improved. But it is also worth noting you did not win. This is a game of wins and losses. You're judged by your record. And I thought Coach Prime said one very interesting thing after the game as it pertained to the offensive line. The offensive line has been an issue, I would argue, dating back probably to the Nebraska game. I mean, it, you know, TCU, they were awesome. Everybody was awesome. But Nebraska on, the, the offensive line has not been great. And it was another disappointing day for Colorado. Afterwards, Coach Prime was asked about it, and he gave a pretty blunt answer. Here is what he said. A reporter asked him. This is what the reporter asked him after the game. He said, reporter, in terms of the big picture, how do you keep Shador upright and healthy? Shador Sanders, obviously his son. Coach Prime says, the big picture, you go get new linemen. That's the big picture, and I'm going to paint it perfectly. So what is the answer to fixing the offensive line? You go get new offensive linemen. And listen, 
I think a lot of people that are old school college football people that don't like the new era that we're in don't love quotes like that. But listen, this is the new world and I have no problem with it. And I really think that is an interesting conversation worth developing for worth worth discussing. One, first of all, he's not wrong. And and again, I, I've said this a million times. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I have no problem with that, with his approach, with Lincoln Riley's approach, with anybody's approach about roster building and roster management in the portal NIL era. If we have given the players the right to leave anytime they want, then it's okay for the coach to be critical publicly. And I also think at the same time, I've said a million times in this NIL era, if kids want to be paid like professionals, that's fine. They deserve it. They deserve a cut of the pie. They're working hard too. They're bringing in revenue. People are coming to see them. But you're also not immune to criticism and immune to responsibility if you are not living up to your expectation. So one, I have no problem with the quotes. Two, the quotes are spot on. Like what else are we supposed to say at this point about this offensive line? Are we supposed to pretend it's not bad? Are we supposed to pretend they're not living up to, that they are living up to expectations? Because I looked at the stats. 24 carries for 25 yards rushing. That was Colorado's rushing attack. 24 yard, 25 yards on 24 carries. That is abysmal. That is embarrassing. And it is as equally embarrassing as Shador Sanders getting sacked seven more times. And I've heard all the excuse, you know, all the, the other side that is anti-coach prime. I've heard him say, well, you know, I mean, first of all, uh, you know, he's just trying to pad his son's stats for the NFL. So first of all, his son's about to get killed out there. So please don't tell me that he's trying to pad his son's stats. But like Coach Prime was actually asked about it after the game. He's like, we tried to run the football. He's like, you understand that when you run it on first and 10 and it gets blown up three yards in the backfield and it's second and 13, second and 14, second and 15, then all of a sudden everybody knows you're passing and you're off rhythm the entire game. By the way, it worked both ways. He mentioned it. He's like, there was a couple of times that we made big plays in the backfield early in a drive and it threw them off. And so what he's saying isn't incorrect. It's the new era of college football. But I also think if you're a Colorado fan, you do have to take some positives out of this game. And it's why I'm not ready to just bail on this team and bail on the ship for the season. First off, like, like if you're sitting here saying that this is somehow proof that this team stinks or is overrated or whatever, you know, uh, let's just look at the facts, right? Who was it? David Fisdale. Take that for data. This Colorado program, listen, we, we we get so caught up in the moment, in right now, in this second. Here's the bottom line with Colorado. You understand, not only did they go 1-11 last year, that's been over-discussed. You understand they lost to the same UCLA team at home by 28 points last year in a game that UCLA basically pulled their starters after three quarters. Well, this year, it's a 12-point game at the Rose Bowl. The defense has a good game. The offense O-line is not good enough. But, like, if you can't see the improvement, I don't know what to tell you. I would add it's not perfect. Too many penalties. The offensive line isn't good enough. But outside of the Oregon game, and by the way, Oregon's awesome. Oregon just destroyed Utah. We're going to talk about that game later. Oregon just destroyed Utah. Outside of the Oregon game, Colorado's been competitive in every game. Yes, you want to win them all. And yes, Coach Prime is mad. And yes, the team is mad. He said it after the game. He said, I'm not worried about a bowl game. He's like, I'm worried about winning every game. But you look at the results. Listen. You're, you're, you start whatever four and one, four and two, I guess it was. You lose to Oregon, but listen, USC was competitive. You lose by a touchdown there. On top of that, um, what else? Stanford, okay. You want to win that game, but you lose by one in overtime, whatever it was in a game where, tra- like, I'm not going to make excuses. What I am saying is if you can't see that last year they lost to USC by 40 something points and it's a touchdown game with a chance to tie the game late. You can't see that they lost by 28 to UCLA. They lose by 12 on the road. There are improvements. And I think lastly, listen, it goes back to kind of what we've said is, is you kind of know who the guys are, who you can trust, who you can't going forward in terms of what the next step is. And you do know kind of what the gaping hole is, right? I mean, every program, every team has places where they need to get better. I mean, I think if you asked an Alabama fan right now, They're happy with where they're at. They're in position to win the SEC West and maybe compete for a national championship, but they'd like to be better at quarterback. Um, You know, whoever, I'm just trying to think of who else is good right now. Uh, Oklahoma's got deficiencies. Texas has deficiencies. Georgia has deficiencies. Nobody's perfect, but I thought it was interesting after the game, coach prime kind of addressed that O line. He not only said we need new O linemen. He said, look, you think people aren't paying attention? 
You think people don't see the offense that we're running? You think people didn't see that offense operating at a really, really, really high level early in the season? And the, the fact that there will be playing time available on this offensive line? So listen, I, I know there's a lot of people that want to be negative and, and yell at guys like me. Why are you still talking about them? They're very interesting, and they are still so much better than where they were. And I thought Saturday was a step in the right direction. Now, the big question, it goes without saying, can you carry that momentum into next week? You're playing a tough physical Oregon State team next week. They're coming off a loss. And it is worth noting, the schedule does not get any easier. Um, you know, Oregon State at home. Arizona all of a sudden is playing lights out. We might have to talk about them as well. They've won back-to-back games against ranked opponents at Washington State, at Utah to close the year. So listen, the schedule doesn't get easier. I'm not going to predict wins and losses here. What I am going to say is if you could not see positive signs coming out of Saturday, I don't know what to tell you.